Hello everyone, my name is Fox. In this particular video, we're going to be taking a look at the GPD P2 Max's battery, specifically with understanding and optimizing battery life as best as we can. Now, there were a few people, not a lot, but a few people that were misinterpreting my Doom performance videos on the P2 Max and not particularly uh, fully grasping when I was saying worst case scenario. Now, I don't really fault any individual for misinterpreting that because a lot of laptop manufacturers will give really, really silly metrics with regard to battery life on laptops. Like you'll see some that say 300 hours of listening to music. And I don't, I don't really find that to be a very valuable metric because who will just go like, all right, well, it's time to listen to my music and I'm going to put this on shuffle and just closes the lid and like, I'm going to do this for 300 hours. I don't really expect anyone to be doing that. Um, I don't find it to be very valuable. Uh, I mean, maybe they'll do that for an hour or two, but what that actually equates to battery life and how they're going to be using it generally, I don't think that anyone's going to be keeping any specific number in their head. Because it's, it's just not... It's just marketing BS. And to get away from marketing BS and just give you guys a straight dope, I was giving you worst case scenarios because I know 100% of people will get that worst case scenario figure because that's how it's going to work that's just how numbers work so whenever i run gaming benchmarks and we show stuff if you're going to be gaming on this with a demanding game something that will redline and push it to eight watts at all times yeah that worst case scenario battery life is 100 percent valid uh in my review i said that the average battery life is four hours long. And I still stand by that. That is something that I think everyone should anticipate that you will have around four hours of battery life with just general usage. In this particular video, we're going to show you how you can push that up a little bit and kind of maximize that. Try to be very, very aware and thoughtful, mindful of how to extend battery life. So one thing that I want you guys to kind of look at as we're going through this video is taking a look at this total power metric and what we're doing currently. Now, this total power is not just a system on a chip, i.e. the CPU and GPU and everything that governs that. This is everything. This is the CPU, GPU, the RAM, the SSD, the LCD, the Wi-Fi, the Bluetooth, everything that is needed to run is taking that much power right now. Now, you may be thinking that's that's pretty good. I mean, well, the system is idle right now, but also one thing that I do recommend people doing if they really care about it is putting on power saver mode. We'll go to best performances. This is what I was also having with all of my Doom videos and everything else. I always had it to best performance. You'll see this spike up, but you'll see this come back down. Uh, basically, instead of getting four watts on average, we're gonna go to five watts on average. This will kind of simmer off a little. Now, there are a few things that we need to kind of understand from a basic. Now, what is the battery life on the P2 Max? The P2 Max's battery is a 35 watt hour battery. Don't worry about the voltage, don't worry about the amperage, just care about this. It's 35 watt hour, that's the only thing you need to know. So at 35 watt hour, if we're averaging five watts, that means that you can have seven hours of battery life. It's pretty simple, right? If we went ahead and lowered, you can see that we're at five watt. If we go to the battery, and we go to best battery life, now you're gonna see that this will lower itself and we're gonna to go to around four watts on average. Now, that may be that like you're saying, well, you only saved one watt. What does that do for that? Well, one watt will give us, uh, well, if we go to four watts, we're gonna have eight and a half hours of battery life. So one watt gave us an hour and a half extra battery life when we're talking about you know how low this is going. And that's huge. Um, so just doing that one little thing, obviously we're idling right now, but doing best battery life does do a lot of things internally to save as much power as possible. And you will be able to extend it up to five hours with general usage. Um, but you know, th this is going to be, you're going to be sacrificing things. There's going to be performance penalties with, with, with regard to doing best battery life. But if you care more about best battery life, it's just as simple as putting it right there and you're going to be extending your battery life very quickly. Now there's two things that you need to understand. This applies to a lot of other things um, as well, like other Intel laptops. Intel does two things. This PL1 is called Power Limit 1 and Power Limit 2. By default, um, Intel lists this at 7 watt and 15 watt for Core M3. This is different for different chips. We're specifically talking about the P2 Max. It's very easy to find out what your chip does for Power Level 1 and Power Level 2. 
Now, what you need to know is power limit two, this 15 watt metric, this will only sustain itself for about 20 seconds. And you're thinking, well, what are you gonna be doing that's 20 seconds long that will give you this 15 watt figure? And it really comes down to basically just browsing. Power limit two doesn't matter that much. Uh, we can see it right here. It's basically a race to halt type of thing where you want to try to gun the system. You'll see it just by loading the browser that we're going to gun this up. And now, again, this is total system power, so it's not just system on a chip. But you can see that it loaded the page, and then it went back down. And if we type something here, we load it up, we're going to see that this spikes up. And then when it's done, finished loading, it's going to go back down. And this is the type of spiky nature of power usage that you should anticipate when just browsing. But even though it jumps up to 18 watt very briefly, we're gonna go back down to five watt when we're doing stuff, even when watching video and stuff, because a lot of that stuff is gonna be handed over to the hardware decoder on here. So there's not something that you need to think that, oh, if it's, if it's something else like flash, flat, we know no one uses flash anymore, but flash would be entirely CPU dependent. And then you'll start to see that raise up, but it'll only go up to um, about 13 watts uh, because we're going to be limited to 8 watt at that point because it's not going to be sticking at 15 watt at that P PL2. Now, what GBD does is they set PL1 to 8 watt, which is extremely smart of them because they're going to be shipping this with the 8100Y. The 8100Y version uh, will need a little bit more power to see its frequencies. And one thing to note is that dual core wise, the 8100Y will hit 2.7 gigahertz on dual core, dual core. With 7 watt, you're really not going to see that all that much. So GPD specifying 8 watt is smart in my opinion, and it's something that will allow everyone to better see that those gains, the, the reason for even having the 8100Y. Uh, and again, you're only going to see that if you actually need it at all times, which in which case video rendering, uh, playing games, doing anything intensive, right? Like anything that you need to do intensive is going to matter there. Now, very quickly, let's go back into a game benchmark. So this is something that will stress the machine now stress the machine it will gladly use up all eight watts and this is something that you'll be able to see a little bit more clearer here because you can see cpu package power right over here again we're going to be jumping up to power limit two so this is going to be saying hey you can use up to 15 watts which it'll gladly do you can see our frame rate is going to be jumping up higher than it and then it wants to but after about 20 seconds this figure is going to come back down it's going to come back down to eight watt average there it goes and now we're at eight watts and this is normal that's why the power limit two thing is not something that you really need to worry about because uh it's so infrequently used and if you're gunning all the time it's never going to go back into power limit two it's just going to stay at power limit one uh and it's doing that to maintain well temperatures mostly but also for battery and other reasons now the power limit two thing again is mostly for browsing reasons and regardless of the power saver, you're not actually going to see it in there unless we actually went ahead into power CFG and also changed the, the power level to so that the graphics card will have a low power state. Right now, I have that at a high power state, so that's not going to change because I've already told it, no, by all means, continue to use all all GPU power because the GPU clock will try to use as much power as possible. If we go ahead into the power CFG, uh, I can show you that real quick. That is something else that you can do to extend battery life. So if we go out of here and we do power CFG.cpl right here, if I can put the L in there. So we go power CFG CPL. Let's go that over here. Let's get this out of the way for the moment. We go to change power plan and we're going to go to change advanced power and then we're going to go to intel graphics settings intel packable so i have both of these to maximum performance so on battery you would want to do this to uh, maximum battery life and once we do maximum battery life again this is something if you cared about maximum battery life without really having to touch anything you will see better battery life out of this because our GPU clocks won't be hitting as high. So you're gonna see this at a, a lower frequency than 800 megahertz. We'll wait for that to load or I'll just go ahead and skip ahead of this. Okay, so we're in this now and you can see that total power because I've gone ahead and power of CFG and told it 
told the GPU that when we're on battery, use as little power as possible. You can see that our total power, here's our CPU package power, we half that, we're down down to four watt, and our frame rate has suffered because of this. But now we're down to nine watts, 9.5 watts. And at this one, we're at three and a half hours of battery life while playing a game. So even worst case scenario, when you put it to battery centric settings, you will extend your battery life even when trying to, not caring, you will get three and a half hours of battery life on out of this. Now, again, the worst case scenario where I said two hours of battery life is because I forcefully pushed everything to the worst case scenario, not touching TDP, just leaving TDP set to what G, uh, GBD set it at. And that would give you that would have given you the worst case scenario of two hours. But now that I've gone ahead and reverted that, now we're gonna see, you know, three and a half hours. And at three and a half hours when gaming, you, I think that's something that a lot of people um, would be glad about. So that's more the point is that I want to say is that, you know, when I give these worst case scenarios, because a lot of times things can be dynamically whimmed from the user, I feel better off giving worst case scenarios. But sometimes people misinterpret that um, because they'll think, oh, that's just what I'm going to get at all times. And that's not the case. It the the the. the it's entirely up to you, the user, what kind of battery life that you're going to get. And there's lots of things that you can do. Um, additionally, one other thing that I could show you, let me go ahead and bring up hardware info again, just so you can see what's going on here. Uh, I will go ahead and load a movie. Now, one thing that is a, a, um, a thing that could totally happen, let me go over here. One thing that can totally happen, I'll have this playing in the background. So we'll just jump ahead. Let me lower the volume so that YouTube doesn't kill me. Um, so this is a 1080p video that's playing right now. And you can see that our power, total system power, really doesn't do much. And the reason that's the case is because there is a hardware decoder on the chip itself that won't be hitting that much power. It'll be using a hardware decoder for running this video. So one thing that you could do is if you were in a hotel situation or an airplane or somewhere else, you could lower the brightness all the way have this full screen and if we were to go ahead and you know turn off the lights here obviously we can see the screen just fine you would be able to watch it just fine especially in a darker condition if we go ahead and turn off all the lights obviously you can see you can see the screen now if we go ahead and turn that back on and i'll put the lights back on It becomes very difficult to see, especially in dark scenes. But um, what we can see here is that this particular video, while playing at low brightness, especially with battery saving on, we're at five watts of battery. So if you wanted to, in a specific situation, you could fly from New York to LA and watch three movies uh, and still have battery life left over. Because at this particular wattage, at lowest brightness, playing a movie, 1080p, doesn't matter, it could also be 4K. I have a, I have a 60 gigabyte Blu-ray rip of this. Um, it's it's going to be the exact same thing. This power is always going to stay the same. As long as the hardware decoder is the one that is running, decoding this video, which if it's a Blu-ray rip, it will be, it's going to be the same power. I've already tested it, it's already, I guarantee you it's going to be the same power. So uh, even that, at that point, you'd also be able to make a benefit of this high resolution display because it actually does look slightly better. So that's basically what I wanted to, to get across is that um, a few things that you can very easily do to maximize battery life. You should never run this with full brightness because full brightness will juice that battery pretty big time. And even when we're doing idling, you just saw that we just went up about two watts. Um, this is now 6.5 watt average and 6.5 watt average is going to give us five hours of battery life. So we lost an hour of battery life just by maximizing brightness. Um, and again, we're losing an hour when we're talking about six hours. Uh, so we're even, we're talking about a five watt zone right now. Again, uh, I try to stress this so that people can kind of have a, an understanding of this. So, um, very briefly, if we were to have extreme battery savings and for something that you can do uh, with gaming uh, time, you should expect 3.5 hours of gaming with this is a battery saving. Uh, average use, uh, this is web browsing, kind of just messing around. You should anticipate five hours. This is a battery saving, medium brightness. 
Uh, movies you can anticipate six to seven hours. I'm gonna say, I'll just say six hours because I could I, I feel com comfortable guaranteeing that that's that's a full trip from uh, New York to LA or LA to New York. I don't know which way the which way is faster. I think I don't know which which way the world is spinning with planes going. Um, so this is what I'm going to feel comfortable saying with, this is also medium brightness, uh, but with battery saver on. And that's basically what I wanted to get across, specifically with the GPD P2 Max, the things that you should be anticipating for the battery, uh, how you can get battery, better battery life if you're not really crazy about performance um, without even GPD having to do anything in the BIOS. Just go ahead, set this to best battery life. Uh, hopefully this was an informative video for you to see that you are in control of all this very simply without having to do anything. You don't even have to touch uh, Intel's XTU. It's not necessary at all, uh, which we could have done and just kind of lowered that, but it's not necessary. It's very simple. Just slide that little battery meter around. Be very cognizant of uh, the brightness. Medium brightness is what you should be using pretty much all the time. The only time that you should be using max brightness is when you're outside in a sunny environment. That is the only time you should ever be using max brightness. Otherwise, medium brightness is what you should be using at all times. Lowest brightness is if you want to extend battery life. If you're in um, a dark room, an airplane, somewhere short, that you, this basically will work if you're watching a movie. Um, I don't really uh, recommend running at low battery, but if you're in a dark room at night, by all means do low, uh, low brightness because that will extend your battery life as well. But medium brightness is where all these tests at this battery saver will give you. Um, and again, also in the power CFG, make sure that you stipulate that the GPU to use maximize battery life. Um, so there are things that you need to do to kind of you know keep on top of that. Uh, but that's it. Hopefully this video was informative. As always, thank you for your time and thanks for watching.